Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today for a foundation wear test. Um, recently on the market, the Benefit uh, Hello Happy Foundation, soft blur foundation um, has reached the market and I was lucky enough to go to the Melbourne launch of it. So I got two shades and we got a goodie bag that was in this sort of like cute plastic sort of, I don't know, picnic bag. Um, and in here there were like, there was some cool stuff. There was like, Fairy Floss, which is cotton candy for people that don't know. We've got some, uh, just some lollies, a pair of happy socks. I love socks like this. I'm so, I'm so excited, happy socks. And some fancy AF glasses, hello. Hello. But the main things that they were launching were of course the Hello Happy Foundation, which is a new foundation. Look at the packaging. Like I just love it when things like boxes have faces for no reason. It's very cute. Um, so yeah, that foundation and also um, new shades of their brow products. So I'm a bit of a benefit brow product junkie. I'm panning like my other brow products because my two favorite products, like brow products, hands down, are Cabrow and also Precisely My Brows. They're my favorite. So now they come in uh, more shades. So there's 3.5 and 4.5, which are neutral shades. Previously, they were only cool and warm shades. So they've released um, Goof Proof Brow Pencil, Precisely My Brow, and Cabrow in the kind of half shades. And after I do apply the foundation, I'll show you how the brow product applies as well, because I just use the Cabrow in 3.5. Um, but when I was looking for my other Cabrow, because um, I've got two and four um, to show like the shade comparison which are like here um, I this is what I pulled out of my everyday sort of makeup drawer so I am a bit of a benefit brow junkie it, it is a thing so before I go on to applying this and letting you know how it wears throughout the day I do want to point out this is not a first impression I've used this a couple of times and I've sort of been playing with it in different ways so this is more just a review but um, I want to say like the packaging is super cute so one side of the box and also the square sort of bottle. There's a little face with little love heart eyes. I don't know why. I think that's really super cute. Uh, if you turn it around, it's got the details. So this foundation is called Hello Happy, which I think is once again, really cute. I don't know why it's just super cute. Um, the box also looks similar. You can see I've got two shades here. Um, and this is called a soft blur foundation. Now, when you do open this, it tells you some information, but when you look at the stats that they give in this, they seem a bit like wishy-washy. So 99% said it feels weightless, 98% it feel, said it feels breathable, 95% said it gives natural looking coverage, and this is by self-evaluation by 103 women after one week of use. So it's like, yeah, yeah, maybe. So this retails in the US for $29 for 30 mils or one fluid ounce, and in Australia it's $49. Now, um, yeah, it's pretty pricey, but you do get a full 30 mils, so it's a standard foundation. I still think that that is super cute. They look like they're so happy together. So the claims are that it's a lightweight foundation. It evens out skin tone and blurs imperfections with soft focus optical blurring spheres. It has a natural matte finish and a light to medium coverage. So I don't mind that. This is not something that I'd use for filming, but it's definitely something I'd use on just an everyday makeup day. So my makeup today is not like filming makeup. It's what I would go down to the shops, what I would go, you know, have a coffee with a friend wearing. So this is the sort of makeup that uh, sounds good for those sort of days for me. And I think a lot of people have those sort of days. So um, yeah, a nice sort of light to medium coverage foundation with a soft matte finish, blurs imperfections, great, I'm all for it. It also contains SPF 15, so it's a very light SPF. You'd still wear a sunscreen underneath it. I am wearing a sunscreen underneath it today, but um, it does have a little bit of uh, sun protection. Now I do wanna talk about the shades because you would notice that I have two shades here. Um, I've got two and four, and there are 12 shades in the range. Now um, I rem remember seeing people talk about this when they saw the shade range and they were very like, disgruntled that there were only 12 shades. But one thing that Benefit has done pretty well is that there are four light shades, four medium and four deep. So even though there aren't many shades and it's very hard to find your shade, which is why I've got two, because I have to mix two, um, I feel like that they are fair. Like it's almost like there's not many shades for everyone, which is fair across the board. It's not like there's 15 light shades and no deep shades. There are four, four, four. So, um, and the shades go pretty deep. So like they don't go super light, they don't go super deep, but it's quite a nice even spread. So I do think it is a quite wide range, 
but if you're like me, um, you might find that one particular shade doesn't suit you perfectly and you need to mix. So you might be looking at this and going, okay, you've got two and four, why don't you just use three? And three was described as a light neutral, but I found it to be very, very yellow. And that's, I think, a problem that I had with this range is that the shades are very yellow. And even if they say neutral, often they're not that neutral. So I found the best sort of thing for me was mixing two, which is light warm, and four, which is medium neutral to sort of make the right kind of color. Um, medium cool was number five, and that also was quite a nice, neutral shade but it was a little bit too deep for me so I thought the best way was to mix both and you will probably find that as well that if you're wanting to buy this you might need to mix them because uh, like I said there's 12 shades but because they go from quite fair to quite deep um, there is a lot of variety in between that they're missing out on so you might just have to mix and match which you know is annoying but it, it is what it is. Now if you do have multiple shades um, they also were saying that you know if you wanted to you can get a deeper shade for like bronzing or a lighter shade for highlighting. So if you wanted to do that, you could. But one thing I do like about them is you can straight away tell which shade you're grabbing because the packaging corresponds to the shade. So um, you can see that that one is definitely four because it's a little bit deeper. That is definitely uh, two because it's a little bit more yellow and a little bit lighter and it's a it's the warm light one so it makes sense um, but this packaging is quite handy um, I do find that because it's a very liquidy foundation I find that this sort of this sort of dispensing mechanism works really great for runny formulas but I did notice that because you do need to shake these probably to get the pigment um, mixed in quite well before you use it um, when you do open it often it kind of splurts out so um, yeah just be careful with that and the instructions of this are to use like one drop and put it on and for a light coverage um, and then you can build it up in sort of layers so you know you can make this quite light if need be I still think a drop of foundation doesn't cover your whole face um, maybe if you're using it on your fingers and you're really sort of like smearing it all over maybe but um, these sort of they did bring out little sponges to apply this with I don't have one um, so I used another sponge but I've also used this with a brush and sponges and brushes apply these quite well but do be careful that it's probably best to put your product on your face first and then buff it in with a brush or pat it in with a sponge because this is so runny that it absorbs into um, your brush or your sponge if you put it on directly which is what I normally like to do I sort of like to pump um, or squeeze product directly onto the brush and then sort of buff it in but I found that since this is so liquidy it just sort of like absorbs into the brush and you waste a lot so it's best to put this on first and then sort of blend it on your face okay so before we get on to the wear test I thought I'd just quickly say that I am 32 so I have slightly older skin. Um, I have oily combination skin, so I get quite oily in the T-zone. And then on the rest of my face, it's quite normal. Right now, since it's winter, it's a little bit dry and a little bit dehydrated. Um, and my T-zone isn't as oily as it is in summer. So yeah, this is a test on oily combo skin. Um, and let's get on to the application. All right, so we're naked faced and uh, it is just before 10 a.m. So um, I'm gonna try to wear this for a good 12 hours if not more and there's a close-up of the two bottles that I own so they're very very cute look at their little happy faces but I'm gonna color match myself just to see if there is one shade that does work for me I don't think there is but um, this one is a little bit too light it sort of might be a good winter shade uh, I could get away with that but I think I'd look like a ghost a little bit but um, that's number two and if you do shake it a lot, it just starts kind of coming out of the little tip, which is kind of annoying, but that is shade four. So once again, I think actually shade four, if you blend it out, like if I was blending it out on my neck, see, I reckon I'm just in between the two. Look, they do blend out a lot. So I think depending on how I was going, if I wanted to be a bit more fair, if I wanted to be a bit more uh, deeper, I could either go with, I could go with either, but I think my best combination is 
is two of them mixed together. Okay, so I'm actually not gonna be putting any primer on and the reason for that is that I just don't really use primer. The one that I'm using currently is just a hydrating primer um, and my face is pretty well hydrated. I've got two serums on, a moisturizer, sunscreen, eye cream. So I feel like I don't really need it and I sort of wanna see how this wears um, without any primer. And to be realistic, when I do wanna reach for a sort of low, lower coverage foundation, it's generally on days where I'm just ducking out to the shop I don't want many steps so I just go with like a product like this powder it down do some brows do some mascara and then I'm off off I go so um yeah I'm kind of trying to keep this minimal okay so they talk about application in drops like put one drop blend it on build it up if need be but these don't really come out in drops you squeeze it out which is fine um I will show you a bit more actually in case you wanted to see but it's just like a poorer kind of you squeeze a bottle and you can pour a bit out. Now you can get like one drop. I think that technically is one drop. I don't think that's enough for a whole face. I just don't think that will spread over a whole face. So um, I am gonna mix these two colors together. You can see the difference there. You can see that they are still like, maybe that one looks a little bit neutral, but the bottom one still looks quite yellow. So these shades are quite, they lean quite yellow, but I think if I mix them, um, it creates quite a good shade for me. So I'm making my own shade three. And I've also noticed that it's probably best to then apply it directly to your face um, with your fingers because I have used this before where I put it straight onto a sponge and pretty much the sponge absorbed most of it. So I don't want that to happen again because it is sort of like a waste of product. Um, so I want most of the product to already be on my face and then I use a sponge just to kind of move it around. And the sponge I'm using is by Flower Makeup or is it Flower Beauty? I don't know, I tried to check. I've got a lip product by them. It just says flower. So um, whatever that is, uh, I love this sponge. It's super, super soft and bouncy. Um, and I'm using a sponge for this because um, the packaging, this is already starting to dry. I'm talking way too much. I just need to get to it. So I am using a sponge because um, they actually, if you bought this online, I think they had an offer where you could get a sponge for free. So they actually had a sponge that they were selling with this. So that implies to me that this is designed to be used with a sponge. Um, and I have also used it with like a kabuki brush. It works fine. It's not a problem. I actually really like using sponges on a daily basis because I just find that they're so quick and easy and they get a really, really natural finish. Um, not even natural as in like lower coverage, just natural as in it looks nice and blended with the skin. So I think all of a sudden one sort of layer of that, which was more than a drop, but um, one layer nevertheless, it did definitely even out my skin tone. I am looking quite fair, so I think compared to my neck, um, I probably would go a little bit more of four. Um, but definitely some redness has gone. I can still see little like uh, imperfections that I had. I had all these little breakouts from when I was on a plane a few times and it just, my skin didn't like it. So right now, just one layer is a very light coverage. Um, it looks very natural. Um, it almost looks like I'm not wearing any makeup, but my skin's just a little bit better than it was. Uh, it feels like it's set quite well, but it feels nice and smooth. It doesn't feel sticky at all. It doesn't feel too powdery. Um, it just sort of feels smooth, but I am gonna build this up because this is a little bit lighter than what I normally like in coverage and probably color. Okay, I'm gonna apply around this much. And I'm gonna be quicker with it this time because last time I was chatting too much, I was looking for sponges, I was taking too long and it was drying. So I'm mainly just gonna be putting this on the areas sort of that I think need more coverage, which is generally the, you know, T-zone, the inner part of my face. The outer part, I like, I'm happy just to blend the color out a little bit. Um, I don't really need much coverage on my outer cheeks. Okay, this does layer really well. Um, it just seems to sink in with the rest of it. It doesn't pick up, it doesn't, I don't know, it, it just works really well. So all of a sudden, some of those, um, this is looking quite yellow on me. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but all of a sudden, those little dots and those little imperfections that I could see before um, have sort of covered completely. So this is the coverage that I would like to go for on just a daily basis. So I'm really happy with this actually. It looks it looks really good. And in person, I know it looks a bit washed out on camera because I've got a lot of lights, um, but in person it looks really kind of healthy. I might show it to you out in natural light. The only reason 
I'm filming um, under these conditions right now is because I know that I can sort of keep it consistent as the day goes on so it's easier to compare how things look. All right, so we're really up and close and personal and I thought I'd turn down uh, the brightness on my camera so you can see sort of what's happening a bit better without the brightness sort of uh, covering it. So you can see that it is actually going a little bit patchy here. Now, I don't know if that's just my skin or not liking some skincare that I'm using. I might actually try to build that up again a little bit. It's nice and set now. Um, so I, hopefully I can build that up because the more I touch that, the more horrible it looks. Now, to be honest, on a daily basis, that wouldn't bother me so much, but um, I'm just using shade number two here just to see if that covers it. Um, wouldn't bother me so much, but um, because we're analyzing it, um, we're having a good look. So that did cover it. So I just don't know if that was, I don't know. It seems to be doing it a little bit here as well. It's sort of, as it sets, you can see that it starts to, I don't know if it step separates or if just by me touching my skin too much, it just lifts it. But there's definitely a patch here that it doesn't want to cover properly. And I do know that I've got sort of drier skin here um, just from the cooler weather. So, um, and I'm a bit dehydrated. So if you have drier skin, it will probably sit quite patchy on your skin. Whereas all the other parts, it's starting to look red here as well. What's going on? It's like, as it settles, the imperfections are starting to come through again. Okay, let's try just covering that a little bit. All right, I feel like there is a limit to what uh, it builds up to because the more you try to build it up, it does start lifting a little bit. So I think you could really only build this up to sort of like a low medium coverage before it starts to lift a little bit. But yeah, once again, this is just a low to medium coverage product. So I shouldn't expect it to cover all floors, but I did want to point out that it doesn't sit the best on sort of drier skin. And that's not even that dry, like it feels smooth. So, hmm. Anyway, um, but you can see that the like it, it does looks quite nice on pores. It, I have not set it, so it's got a bit of a glow to it, just a bit of a sheen, but it's not tacky. Uh, it's definitely set down. The color is all right. It is looking a little bit more yellow as it starts to dry down. So um, it does oxidize a little bit. Um, and you can see that just neck there. I should actually go down my neck, but so yeah, it looks fine as you put it on, but it definitely gets a little bit darker and more yellow as it starts to develop. And I can sort of notice it a lot under my eyes because it's looking a little bit yellow under my eyes. But in saying all of that, I think if you don't overanalyze it and you look back, um, you step back a bit and you have a look, like I'm just holding my mirror quite far out, um, it actually looks quite nice. It looks like I am, like I have covered my face with something. This is not just natural for me and it possibly is the color because it looks a little bit yellow on me. Um, but you can see that it's covered most of my redness, it's covered most of my imperfections, but they are peeking through so it looks normal and sort of natural. So the claims are 99% of people said it feels weightless. It definitely does feel light on the face. I wouldn't say weightless, like it, I can feel that I've got something on my face, but when you touch it, it sort of feels like you know, like a powder soft finish kind of thing. Like it doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. Um, then it says 98% people said it feels breathable. I don't know about that. We'll see. Uh, 96% said it blurs imperfections. Now I definitely think it does sort of, look, I don't think it hides pores or blurs pores or really, look, blurs imperfections. I guess putting coverage over uh, breakouts and redness and stuff will blur imperfections. But when it comes to like texture wise, I think it doesn't hide like pores, but it doesn't emphasize pores. So I think it just looks natural. It looks normal. It looks fine. And 95% of people said it gives natural looking coverage. And I would have to say yes, because if you put one layer, it looks like it's very, very light coverage. Uh, if you put two layers, it starts looking like it's um, a light to medium. Uh, and I feel like you can't really build it up much more than that before it starts to sort of lift on itself. So what I'll do now, since it is the morning, I'm gonna take uh, the camera out so you can see it's sort of in natural light near the window um, because that'll give a better representation of the color of it um, and maybe how it looks. Because I know right now it looks a bit washed out. I'm wearing black. I find that when you wear a lot of black, it makes your face look really pale. Um, but I'll show you that and then I'll do my makeup and come back. Okay, so it is a pretty overcast, shitty day at the moment, but you can see that 
my face looks pretty natural. Um, you can't really see that patchiness too well. You can see that it doesn't have much of a shine. It's got a slight shine, but uh, like it is a soft matte sort of finish. You can see the color looks quite natural compared to the rest of my body. Um, no, it doesn't look natural compared to that, um, whatever. Um, but it is a little bit yellow for me, but I think it's fine. I think I can get away with it. And this is the boogie coming to say hello. What's up, boogie? Good boy. Okay, and while I'm here, I do want to test some brow products as well. So, so I'll put on the screen the previous sort of brow range, which went from one to six. Um, and in like one and two were light, but there was a warm and a cool. Uh, three and four were medium, but there was um, a light and a cool. And then five and six were deep, but there was a light and a cool. So now they've brought out 3.5 and 4.5. So uh, these are neutral shades. So if you're not if you're not warm or cool, you can go neutral. And I thought I'd compare 3.5 to the two brows that I already have. So we've got two, which is a cool toned light shade, and we have four, which is a cool toned medium shade. So this is 3.5. Now I can't compare this to number three because three is too uh, warm for me, but I can swatch and compare these. Now I tend to use this on like a no makeup day where I just want a little bit of brows filled. I wear this with bolder makeup, so I use them both. So I'm keen to try this one. Now I'm not too sure if you can see the difference but that is two which looks very gray that is 3.5 which does still look sort of gray brown but it's got a little bit of um i don't know a little olive or green sort of tone to it and that is uh number four which is once again a very sort of cool tone brown so it fits in nicely in between them all right well for me i think this color looks it looks quite similar to number four I do, I really like number four and I think this is a quite a good sort of dark brown brow color. I was expecting it to be a little bit lighter on the brows because it does look quite bold and quite dark. Um, but you know, it, it is what it is. I still would definitely use this. I like this color and I really like this formula because it's sort of dry enough that it doesn't deposit too much to make it look too block brow. Um, but it's also wet and sort of sticky enough that you can draw on parts that don't have any hair and it stays. So I really like this formula. I think it's uh, probably the best brow pomade I've used. All right, I'm just taking a bit of shade four because I'm just curious to see how different this actually is. So I do think shade four is darker, um, which I could tell on the swatch, but I wasn't sure if it was that noticeable on the brows. But just putting a little bit there, I do think it has darkened it a lot. So, hmm. Okay, so I'm back with just like quick makeup that I'd sort of do just on a daily basis, on a non-filming day. Um, and I do want to point out that like makeup looks all right over it. I have noticed that in areas where I've powdered, um, which I've powdered everywhere, it sort of looks like it's not sitting as well. So I powder quite a bit around my nose. I feel like my under eye area looks quite smooth, but that's the only area that I put Tarte Shape Tape. Um, I decided to leave the nose without anything so you can see how it wears. And even though it feels nice and smooth from the powder and you know, the amount of imperfections coming through is, is perfectly fine. I just feel like it doesn't react as well like in some areas it sort of looks like it's going a little bit patchy from setting it. But from far away, I think this looks quite good. Um, and I think it feels probably uh, more lightweight now that I've powdered it. So it feels like it, there's no, there's nothing on my skin whatsoever. Um, and also I think the, yeah, the imperfections and stuff from far away, it just looks very natural. So um, I quite like the finish of this. I quite like the feel of it. So we'll check in soon. All right, so it is after three o'clock. So I've had this on for five hours. I can also confirm that these lollies are delicious. They're champagne flavored. I'll take it. Um, what am I gonna say about this? So it's not looking great, but it's not hideous. So at this stage, I think it did oxidize a little bit more. It is looking a little bit more yellow than it did before. It's definitely starting to break down around my nose. So where it's getting oily, it is sort of like come off. Um, around here looks fine, but I'm sure around there is mainly concealer. Um, and it sort of looks like it's sitting on top of the skin. It's not sort of working with the skin well. It sort of just starts to look like it's sort of like powder on the skin. The chin is starting to uh, break down as well. So uh, it's not great for 
oily areas and I'm not even super oily today. So I thought I'd get up close and personal so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see the oil is breaking through. Hopefully you can see that it's sort of broken down on the nose. I don't know if you can see, but it's like emphasizing sort of dry patches that aren't even there. It's just not really sticking to the skin properly. So it's not a good sign that it's starting to break down this much on me at the five hour mark. And the reason being is I've just been sitting at my desk editing. So I haven't even been out breaking a sweat. I haven't been out in the elements. It's not hot. It's actually really cold today. So um, this is not holding up well for like ideal conditions. For me, staying at home, just working at my computer um, and it being quite cold is like perfect conditions for foundation. So if a foundation is going to wear, it will wear pretty much perfectly in those conditions. So um, I don't like how it looks. I don't think my skin looks great. The fact that even holding my mirror like arms distance away, I can see this patchiness here. I can see the oil breaking through. So it's not looking great. Um, so I wouldn't call this a long wear foundation. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to work and I'll check back in later on. All right, so next check in, it is 5.30. So this is the seven and a half hour mark. Um, I am going to my mum's house for dinner. So that's why I can't check in at like exactly eight hours. Um, but I have to say that it's pretty much sort of held up um, as well as it was doing since last time. I'm probably looking a bit more disheveled just because the day's been going on. But I have noticed that sitting down in front of the lights, I do have more of a, just an overall sheen. So the oil of my face is starting to break through um, the rest of the foundation. So it had sort of broken down around the nose and the chin. And now I'm just getting like a healthy glow um, to me, which, you know, it, it happens. It's a thing. This looks powdery for some reason. I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, I'm just definitely noticing it's just a little bit uh, shiny overall but it hasn't broken down any further than it did last time I also wanted to point out that what I didn't mention last time as well was probably at the one or two hour mark um, I didn't do a check-in but the makeup was uh, it had sort of started working with the heat and the oils of the skin and it was looking a little bit more natural than when I first put it on when I first put it on it sort of looked a little bit I don't know a little bit matte, uh, not a bad thing. I quite like a matte finish, but it um, started looking a little bit more natural at the one, two hour mark, and then more the four, five hour mark, it started breaking down. So now we're just going down and down and down. It's just gonna start breaking down more and more, but um, yeah, I will check in after dinner to see how this oily face looks. All right, so it's the last check-in and it is nearly 11 o'clock. So this has been on for, um, what, 12 hours and 40 minutes. So it's, you know, it's a bit of a long wear test. Um, this doesn't actually claim to be super long wearing. Um, I have heard that it's supposed to be like 14 or 15 hours wear, but I can't actually find where it says that. So I don't think it's designed to be super long wearing, um, but I don't know if you can see, I'm gonna turn down this brightness again. So I don't know if you can see, but there is definitely sort of just an overall, look at my forehead. There's an overall just shine that sort of started to happen on my face, around my nose, on my chin is broken down, um, definitely on the forehead, we'll zoom in. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, look at that beautifulness. Um, sort of the breakouts or the little like imperfections I had are all like coming through that gleam with the lights. Um, you can see it's all broken down all on my nose. Chin has pretty much no makeup left on it. This is no touch ups whatsoever. The only thing I touched up was my lips. Um, but like this part is still sort of normal since I don't get really oily there, but the rest has sort of started to break down. Um, and is quite oily. Anyway, so I think with this, I'm gonna say compared to the last check-in, which I think was at the seven hour mark, um, the only difference is, I don't think it's actually broken down, maybe on the chin. I think it has broken down on the chin a lot more, but it's just more, like it hasn't started to break down too much. It's just more starting to get very oily. So um, it's not really good at holding much oil or to prevent oil from uh, breaking through. So for me, this is definitely not a long wear foundation. It is not an oil controlling foundation. I don't think it claims to be either too. So it doesn't really 
um, yeah, it doesn't meet those requirements, but it doesn't also make those claims. Um, but you know, this, I don't, how do, what do I say about this foundation? I think for the price point, um, I think you can get better things, um, for cheaper. So I've tried a few like L'Oreal foundations that have that sort of very runny, uh, what was it called? It wasn't, I'm going to have to put on the screen, the L'Oreal one that I'm referring to, but that one is cheaper, has that same sort of runny consistency. And I think it wears a lot better than this. So for me, I don't love this foundation. I really do love the packaging. I think it's super bloody cute. Like if you like cute stuff, that is a cute foundation to have. I also think that there's definitely like a market for this sort of lighter weight, um, sort of light to medium coverage foundations on a sort of just a daily basis. I think it's a, it's a good move. I just wish this had better longevity and that it sat better on the skin. Um, I just found that it looked like it kind of sat on top of the skin. It didn't really meld with the skin. It didn't sort of look like a second skin. It sort of looked like a layer of paint on top of the skin essentially. Um, and then as that starts to break down, it starts to like look even worse. But one thing I do have to say about this, that um, the main reason I would recommend this over other products um, is that I find that in this market of sort of sheerer, um, sort of liquidy, lightweight foundations or sort of BB cream type products, there aren't many that are in the very fair to very deep range. Now I do actually have the darker shade here. That's the box of it. I'm not going to actually show you a swatch of it because uh, we're going to see how many uh, sort of applications you can get out of this. And this was the one that the PR had a lot left of. Um, but that is, if you look at the indication of the light being this bottle, the dark being that bottle. Um, I think this is really great if you do have deeper skin tones, because at least in Australia, um, if you want to go a lightweight sort of BB cream type product um, like this, it generally comes in like two, three, sometimes six shades. And they're always like light to tan. They're never this deep and they're never quite light, like there's one shade lighter than this. So even though I did struggle finding my perfect shade because there aren't too many um, in each sort of category of depth, um, you do have to sort of mix a few possibly, but the range does go from quite light to quite deep. I find they run a bit yellow, that's just my opinion, and they do tend to like oxidize a little bit and dry down to more of um, a yellow look on the skin. But in Australia, to get sort of a lightweight foundation in this kind of shade, it's very hard to do. So I would probably recommend this if you have sort of normal skin that doesn't get oily, but doesn't get too dry, like smack bang on normal skin. Um, if you like more of a matte lightweight finish, you like a liquidy foundation. I think these aren't too bad. Also, the good thing about it is once it gets to about like the four hour mark and starts to break down, it really doesn't break down that much more throughout the day. It just gets a little bit oilier if you do have oily skin. So it's definitely not a foundation I'm reaching for on a daily basis, but if I knew that I was just going to pop down to the shops and I just wanted to look a little bit more put together, it is something that I'd happily put on. Then, you know, make dinner, have a shower, wash it off, not really care. Um, but if I was wearing this to work, it wouldn't work for my skin. And even the fact that I haven't been super oily today and it has been quite shiny, uh, shows that this is just not designed for long wear or oily skin. So this is not a full day wear. This is not wearing to work and going out for drinks afterwards. This is just a Sunday popping down to the shops or going to trivia or something and I just want it to look a little bit more put together but um, I do commend the shade um, variety um, the shades themselves like I said are difficult but the shade variety is pretty good so yeah definitely not a hate it but definitely not a recommendation for me um, I wouldn't give it a thumbs up but I wouldn't necessarily give it a thumbs down I'd give it a eh, it's gonna sit in a drawer for a while until I decide to pan it that's what it's gonna be um, I'm probably more excited about the new shades of the brow product because I really, really love the brow products and 3.5. I think it really worked well um, throughout the day. Look, it wore really well. It matches my hair color really nicely. Um, and if you were looking for a shade that was sort of a little bit lighter than four, but not super warm, uh, these are interesting. So 3.5 and 4.5 are on the market now. I do also have to say that they nailed the packaging because I kind of look at it and I go, oh, I don't mind you because you're so cute. But yeah, mm, not, not, it's not a foundation for me. Anyway, if you do want to see more foundation wear tests, 
just let me know. I do have the Too Faced Peach Perfect foundation that I've been meaning to do a wear test on. Um, I've got a few cushion foundations. I've got a few other foundations that I probably should do wear tests on. So if you do want to see more, let me know in the comments um, and give it a like and I will see you guys next time. Bye.